the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. This gospel, this great king, my friends, this great king that walked this earth, that once walked this earth and lived a perfect life, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, who walked the steps, my friends, of suffering and persecution onto a crucifixion of his own body. The Bible says that he bore on a cross the sins of all the world. John the Baptist came preaching and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of all the world. Amen. And this Christ, my friends, he died and shed his blood and he rose again and he ascended on high to be enthroned on the throne of majesty on high to rule and reign and become sovereign king over all the earth. Amen. That his blood might wash you this day. That his blood would cleanse the vilest of sinners. That Jesus Christ, my friends, he died. He died for Australia. He died for Africa, America. He died for all nations. That you this day wouldn't choose rather to love your life and go to the beach and go to the bars and go to the clubs maybe this night and love your life and love sin and spit in the face of Jesus Christ, my friends. The Bible says that those that will trample underfoot and count lightly and despise his grace and despise his blood, that Jesus Christ, when he returns in earth's skyline, my friends, on his throne, he is going to trample with his own feet he is going to shed the blood of a multitude of men and women and nations of the earth that refuse to bow their knees and surrender to his lordship, my friends. You cannot love this world. You cannot love the things of this world. You cannot love the clothes of this world. You cannot love the music of this world. You cannot love your own life. The, the scriptures say, he that wishes to save his life, my friend, shall lose it. Save his life shall lose it, but he that will lose his life, he that will forsake his life, he that will count all things but loss, my friends, will win Christ, will win and, and receive salvation and his blood and a cross by which he died upon. That is the command of Scripture that Jesus Christ, through what he did, through his death, burial, resurrection, and defeating death and sin and getting the keys of death and hell themselves, as he says in Revelation chapter 1, that he has the keys barely of death and hell, my friends. And most of this world is not going to heaven. They are going to be swallowed up in hell because they refuse to repent of their sins. They refuse to forsake the sinful lifestyles that they have come to love and be comfortable in. They love their home. They love money. They love riches. They love their jobs. They love the things that God has even given them. They have idols in their heart. Most of this city has idols in their heart. God wants to break your idols. God wants to crush your idols. God wants to humble your heart and give you contrition in real time over your sins. God wants you to break before a living God, my friends. Jesus Christ said in his word, he said, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. That's the mercy of God if you in this, your lifetime, your short span of life, can see your sins and come to hate your sins as God hates your sins, that you can come to abhor everything about you in this world that's under his wrath, and that you might march to your death, you might die to this world, you might die to sin, that you'd be made a new creature, that the old things would pass away and all things would become new, that God would set you free from sin. That's what he did to me, my friends. Jesus Christ set me free from sin. He gave me a new heart. He put his spirit inside of me. I used to love going to places like this. I used to love getting a suntan. I used to love looking good. I used to love dyeing my hair. I used to love being, being big and strong. But Christ took it all away. He took me away. He crucified my old man. And who I was is dying, my friends. And Jesus Christ came to live inside of me. Those are the only ones that are going to heaven. Those that are crucified with Christ. Those that stay on the cross of Christ. Those that live crucified lives for Christ. Those that are crucified to this world and the world onto them. Oh, this world 
This world is in trouble with God, my friends. You, most of you, even young people, you are in trouble with God. Where is your Bible? Do you read the Word of God even? God says this Word, this holy book, shall endure forever. The very words on this page, all its judgments, all the woes, all the curses, all the blessings are going to fall upon a generation both of wrath and who he's going to bestow his sovereign mercy upon to plead with all nations. My friends, God is pleading with you this day. Most of these churches around here, most of the pastors in Australia will not tell you and show you how sinful mankind is, how sinful you are, how depraved you are, how in desperate need you are for the cleansing power of the blood of Jesus Christ, how in desperate need this generation is, how in desperate need Australia is to be cleansed within, to be saved and set free. Are you set free from your sins? Are you set free from who you are? Jesus Christ is going to melt the mountains of the earth. Jesus Christ is going to move the islands of the earth. Jesus Christ, by his very voice, is going to shake heaven and earth. Jesus Christ, by his very voice, is going to bring all the lofty and all the proud and all those that love sin. He's going to bring them down. He's going to cause all men to fear and tremble and be amazed and astonished and flee from the wrath of this Lamb, my friends. Because Jesus Christ, he's going to be angry on that day. When he comes to this earth very soon, he's going to see a world that's lost in sin. He's going to see a world that is depraved and gone astray. Scripture says, we like sheep have all gone astray, every man to his own way. And the Lord hath laid upon him the iniquity of his soul. That's what it says. God so loved this world that he had to send his son to be slaughtered on a cross. That all the sins of humanity in this world would be laid upon Jesus Christ the Son of God, your sins, and if you don't turn to him, my friends, if you don't seek him, if you don't humble yourself before him, he will judge you. He will judge you and he will cast you into hell for all eternity. This world is asleep, this nation, this nation of Australia is asleep, my friends, in this hour. This nation of Australia is too comfortable. This nation of Australia has all their security, quote unquote, all their ducks in a row, and God's gonna disrupt it very soon. God's going to bring judgments upon this land very soon because this land is in disobedience to the word of God, my friends. This land wants sin more than God. And God says in his word in Psalm chapter 9 that God shall turn the wicked into hell and all nations that forget God. And if you are not washed in the blood of Christ, if you have not turned from a life of sin, if you have not been set free indeed, like the scriptures say in John chapter 8, who the Son sets free shall be free indeed. Not, not having your best life now, not taking it easy on the beach. That's not in Scripture. You don't see that, my friends, on the lifestyle of the apostles and disciples. You don't see them laying on the beach and getting a suntan. You see them weeping over a world that has gone astray and is lost, is going to hell. You see them weeping and groaning and fasting and preaching until their dying breath. There's not many men like that in Australia. There's so many men and women like that in all the world Praise, brother. Praise. That, don't, that don't love their lives, that don't live for tomorrow and some vacation, but they're living for eternity. They're living for the coming of Christ. They're living for this Messiah that's going to split the sky and take vengeance upon them that don't know God and don't Praise. obey the gospel Praise, of Jesus Christ. Most of you out here don't obey the gospel of Christ. You don't know this living Christ. You don't know this holy Christ. <laughs> You don't know this Christ is separate from sin. He's separate from sinners. He's made higher than the heavens. The Bible says he's going to plague the very sea and the rivers. He's going to plague this world. He's going to plague mankind to get their attention when he comes. He's going to pour out his vials upon all the earth. And sadly, most men and women are going to blaspheme his name. And he's going to conquer Babylon. He's going to conquer sinful men. He's going to cause all the world to be consumed and aware of his glory and his presence and his majesty. And that's what he wants for your life now. He wants your eyes to look up. He doesn't want your eyes to be fastened and alert and affected by all that this world offers you. He wants your eyes to look up and see him and behold him and behold the enthroned Christ 
on the right hand of the throne of God, ever living to make intercession, and he made it on the cross, and he's making it in heaven, that you would be saved, that you would know this Christ, that you would finally repent of all your sins, that you turn away from the sinful lifestyle, that you come to love, that you'd sever yourself from wickedness, that you'd sever yourself from darkness, that you'd sever yourself from every evil way, my friends. This is the true gospel. I'm preaching the word of God. I'm preaching the word of God. I'm preaching the true gospel. This nation needs to hear the true gospel. This nation needs to hear about not just the Christ on the cross that died in Isaiah 53, that was a man of sorrows acquainted with grief, but this nation needs to hear about the risen, ascended, and throne Jesus Christ that's coming to the earth very soon, as he says in scripture. He says, behold, I come quickly. That's what he says. This Jesus Christ, he's coming quickly to do what? He's coming quickly, my friends, to judge and to smite and to rebuke and reprove and convince a lost sinful world that he has always lived, as he says in scripture, that he was once dead and he's alive forevermore. Well, your, your stocks and bonds and your security, all the things that you're seeking to, to lay up for yourself, laying up treasures on this earth, your, your riches and your treasures, are going to be moth eaten They're going to cry out against you on the day of judgment. Your big house, your nice car, your nice body, it's all going to perish. It's all going to wither away. It's all going to be moth eaten upon the consumption and consummation and judgment of the return of Christ, my friends. Oh, this nation is under the wrath of God, my friends, and God is looking for prophets and men of God to cry out and plead, and plead from the heavens. I'm pleading with your soul this day. You can't sit on this beach. You can't have a good life. You can't take it easy and expect to go to heaven. This is not the way to eternal life. This is the way to damnation and destruction, my friends. Yes. You're not on your way to heaven. You're trying to get a nice beach body. You're trying to look good for this and that person. This is wickedness. This is utter, utter wickedness and abomination to God. God is against this, my friends. Jesus Christ is against this wickedness. And he is coming very soon. He is coming to visit this land. He is coming to visit the entire earth. You must reckon with him. I cannot stop. I cannot stop preaching this Christ until I take my last breath because this book is true and real. And most souls are not going to heaven. They're going to hell. Most of you young children, you love your bike and you love skateboarding. You love all these things more than Christ. You love how you look. You love your hair. You love all these things beside Christ who died for you. And you haven't hardly wept a tear, if at all, over your sins your entire life. My friends, you need to mourn. You're going to mourn when he comes. You're going to mourn when the Son of God comes. All the world is going to wail. All the world is going to weep. All the world is going to bow their souls and lick the dust itself when they see the majesty of Jesus Christ, when they behold him upon his throne, when you see him with your own eyes, and he's, he's, he's going to and fro throughout all nations, Jesus Christ, he's going to be roaming to and fro. He's going to melt the earth by his very presence. He's going to sit upon his throne with holy angels. He's going to judge this earth like never before. And he forfeits his soul. What shall it profit you? If you have your best life now, if you have everything you want now, if you have a nice car, if you have a nice home, it's all going to burn. Jesus Christ is going to burn it all away. He's going to burn and break in pieces and annihilate and destroy every single idol known to man. That's what he says in his holy word in Isaiah chapter 2, that the lofty looks of man shall be brought down, and that he will humble the souls of all men, and that the Lord himself shall be exalted on that day. No man shall exalt himself. No man or woman on this earth, no creature shall exalt himself against the Son of God, against the God-man Jesus Christ, against the creator and sustainer and maker and regenerator of the entire earth. No man, no man shall lift up his head. No man shall wax proud before his holy fury and his righteousness that's bestowed and shown upon fallen creation when he returns, my friends. Jesus Christ is coming quickly. Are you ready, my friends?